Money with David Blaine. A discussion about your money, including everything from investing and taxes to real estate. Now with this week's program from D.L. Blaine and Company in New Bern, here's David Blaine. Money. Hello and welcome to All Things Money. My name is David Blaine and I'm going to be your host for the next 30 minutes. On today's show, we we're going to talk a little bit in the first segment about uh, Medicare and some of the problems we're having. We'll get into some... Uh, recent article on broker conflicts, and we'll spend a good time on the show talking about 2010 and all the different tax uh, law changes that are occurring. I know this time of year people are getting their tax information together, and W-2s are in the mail, and it's uh, beginning of that dreaded season uh, of the year called tax season. So we want to give you a few updates on that. Um, before we get into the show, Let's uh, give out the phone number, which is 252-633-0107. We love to hear from our listeners on 94.1 FM, WNBU, as well as our viewers on Cable TV 10 in New Bern. Uh, let us know what you're thinking, what you like, what you don't like, if there are any topics uh, you'd like addressed on the show or questions that you may have. You can also send us an email at allthingsmoney at dlblaine.com and of course you can visit us on the web at www.dlblaine.com and there you'll find information about myself, my firm, as well as most importantly archive copies of the show. If you happen to miss a week or a segment uh, just go over there to the web and uh, you can download the shows and listen to them. So let's get into the first topic uh, for today. And if it looks like I'm reading from a piece of paper, I am, because this is an article from uh, CBS Money Watch, came out a little bit ago, and the title is, Is 2011 the Beginning of the End for Medicare? And this is a fascinating article that talks about one of the biggest problems we have. As a financial advisor, one of the biggest things we look at for people is the cost of medical care as they get older. Of course, this affects um, people with small amount of savings, all the way up to people that have saved a lot of money. The primary insurer in the United States, once you reach age 65, is Medicare. Uh, except for federal retirees and some government employees that continue health insurance, the majority of people that have private insurance, th there is no private insurance for people after age 65. You get Medicare and what's called a Medicare supplement type of policy. but So this is very important to people of all income ranges. Anyway, so in 2011, the oldest of the boomers turned 65. Uh, AARP estimates that another 2.5 million more Americans will be eligible for Medicare this year alone. 2.5 more million this year alone. Uh, that's a 6% increase in people in the 65 and over population. This is just the beginning, however. It's estimated that over the next 20 years, the Medicare program as a percentage of the federal budget is going to be huge. You hear a lot about Social Security. Uh, Social Security, in my opinion, as well as some of the uh, data coming out of the Congressional Budget Office, is that Medicare is actually uh, one of the biggest problems. We see here in 2010, 21% of the federal spending went to Medicare and Medicaid, and by 2020, it's expected to be 31% of the federal budget. And so that's a huge burden on the budget. Of course, the interest on the debt, uh, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, and interest on the debt take up the majority of the federal budget and the discretionary spending that we hear so much about cutting is actually a very small portion. Uh, we look at some of the analysis that's out there. There's a group called the Urban Institute. It's a little left-leaning, but we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at their, uh, their figures here. They estimate that someone will have paid in 114000 in Medicare payroll taxes, but that couple will collect an estimated 355000 in Medicare benefits. And so that is the crux of the problem, is that people are receiving far more benefit from the system than they pay in, which is the purpose of insurance. It's okay for you know a few people 
to have that happen to, but you can't have the whole system predicated on the majority of people not paying enough to cover their own costs. And so any serious debate on reining in the federal deficit and spending has got to uh, center around things such as uh, Medicare. Um, so a couple things what you should do, um, you know, the people that are older today, turning 65, I really don't think that um, you have anything to worry about. The track record of Congress of removing benefits is not very strong. The likelihood that they would cancel benefits for anyone over 65 currently is, is not very likely. Um, what we do recommend, though, is that at some point, I think that they are going to have to reduce the benefits for younger people or raise the contribution amount. But what it points to is in the future, I think people will be required to, in one way or another, share more of the burden of their own health care. And so what does that mean? It means that people have got to be saving more uh, in their on their own to be prepared for this eventuality. If you're younger, uh, we, we encourage people not to plan on Medicare and Social Security to be there the way they are today, and they have got to start saving some more. So that's a little bit on Medicare. It is a big problem, and we'd encourage you to speak with your Congress people to get started on solving, and I know a lot of you are, but it is a big financial problem uh, that's heading down the road. Okay, let's move on to the next topic. I mentioned we were going to talk a little bit about commissions and conflicts. Before I do, my firm, D.L. Blaney Company, is what's called a registered investment advisor. And in the financial industry, there's a lot of people that call themselves financial advisors, financial planners, different terms. And it's very confusing to the consumer, which is actually one of the reasons I got into this business, was to help people to figure out how this works. So a registered investment advisor is someone that has a fiduciary duty to their client. It means they have to put the client's interest above their own, and they're paid by a fee from the client. An insurance, uh, a broker, these people are not fiduciaries to the client, and they have the ability to sell products. The only way to really know, other than asking the person, but where the, the key is, is where the person gets paid from. We get paid by our clients. Uh, a stockbroker, at the end of the year, he gets a W-2 from the brokerage firm, whether it be Wells Fargo or Wachovia or Merrill Lynch, and that's who he works for. He doesn't work for the client. It's a very important distinction and it creates huge conflicts of interest, which we'll get in uh, to right after the break. We need to take a short break for some advertising, and we'll be right back after this.